Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyeballs and if you're watching on YouTube Please only watch when you can safely close your eyes and please subscribe. If you benefit from what I do or you just like what I do, uh, please uh, send me some money. Uh, You can send me a donation to support me, to support you, to paypal.me that's me paypal.me forward slash jason newland paypal.me forward slash jason newland and that's uh, that links also on my website even if you just donate ten thousand dollars each all help towards the yacht so that would be really good thanks so I thought what I'll do is something that I don't normally do because well there's a reason why I don't normally do it it's because I don't normally do what I did today which gives me the opportunity to talk about what I did today because normally I don't generally do what I did although I didn't do that much but I did do something so I actually went out by going out I don't mean I went out clubbing or you know didn't dress up and you know in town I didn't see him today but there's a bloke and he's dressed grey all in grey like a metal man which I guess that's what he's supposed to be and I was thinking that's got to be quite boring because you can't really break character can you what do you do when you need to go to the toilet because there are public toilets there's one yeah one that I know of public toilets but can you imagine if you're in a public toilet and you come out and there's this bloke completely grey like every part of him including his what his clothes are his skin everything that would be freaky wouldn't it Oh God, do you imagine someone saying, that's prejudice, you're being racist against people made of metal. He isn't really made of metal. But he's made out to look like he is. I would have preferred it if, I don't know, just when I think of a metal man, I think of the Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz I love that film by the way if you ever get a chance there's a film called The Wiz that you might not know about and it's it's got all that that Motown Motown stars of the 80s or 70s and 80s in it it's like everyone I think Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, Aretha Franklin, Diana Ross. I'm making some of them names up. Well, I'm not making the names up because they do exist, but it's a lot of really famous people in that film. It's really good. It's a really, really good... It's not so much a good... It's not so much that it's a good film, 
but the music's really good. And there's one bit where Michael Jackson is, he's a scarecrow. And he's on a, like a post, you know, and he's surrounded by crows, but they're not crows, they're people dressed as crows. And there's this whole singing bit, uh, and there's like newspapers. I think it might be because he had newspapers inside him. Because they do, sometimes the scarecrows, they have, they're made of, yeah, sometimes for their innards, they have old newspapers, don't they? Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, so, it, but this is really good because he sings this song. Um, it's a really good song. I forget what it is. I'm not really promoting it very well, but it doesn't matter because if you do watch it, he's not going to get any royalties, is he? And but it's it's a really it's a really good song. Now Andre decided to run around now. Seriously, I did a recording about. hour and a half ago and he was running around as soon as I finished he went to sleep and right now as I started talking he's out and out about again why? why? he'll be climbing up on me in a minute why can't he just behave? Mind you, it's time for his bed, really. He'll be going to bed soon. When I finish this, I'll put him in his bed. Oh, look. As soon as, I, as, soon as he heard me say bed, he's run into his bag. He doesn't want to go to bed. He wants to stay up. Because even though he's asleep, he can do what he wants. I want to put him to bed. I put him in his cage. And he can't. He doesn't have the freedom for seven hours or eight hours or whatever it is. That he's in there while I'm, while I'm in bed. He's like, Daddy, I'm in, I'm in, look, look, I'm in the bag now. I promise I'll behave. Don't put me to bed. I'll put you to sleep. So, it's worth checking it out, the whiz. If you just put in, let's say, to YouTube. I would say other video, <laughs> other video websites are available, but which other ones? So if you go into YouTube and you click in, put in Michael Jackson, The Wiz, Scarecrow Scene, and that will probably bring it up and you'll see a picture of him, it looks like he's kind of on a cross to be fair. But uh, he is on this, you know, he's, he's kind of tied up onto this thing. But it's a really good song, really, really, really good song. Uh, I like it a lot, really do. Watched it many times. So... Because last week, on Wednesday, I think it was, <sighs> my psychiatrist said about, I should go out, I should, you know, make an effort and try and go out every day which is what I did to be fair I didn't do it Thursday but I did go out Friday I did go out Saturday didn't go out Sunday which was yesterday although technically it might now be Tuesday because it's kind of I 
don't know what time it is. Oh, it is. It's, it's half past one. No, half past midnight on Tuesday. So, yes, it's now Tuesday. So I'm talking about yesterday now. So I got up and I thought, you know, I'm going to make the effort. And I had a bath. I had something to eat. And then I went out. Yeah, I didn't even have a cup of coffee. So for for ages, you know, I can't remember the last time that I didn't have a cup of coffee with my breakfast. I mean, admittedly, I don't keep track of it. I don't have a a log that I fill in, you know, every day, cup of coffee, tick yawn for a few seconds at the beginning of every recording tick moan about Andre tick oh I'm yawning now tick another tick but I You know, in some ways, I seem to feel a bit more... I feel a bit tired when I've had a cup of coffee. It's supposed to be the opposite, isn't it? But I had some juice. Uh, I got this juice... um, It was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Two weeks. Two weeks. Maybe three weeks three, two, three no I think it was three weeks ago nearly three weeks on Wednesday and I got about five of these juices but they last for quite a while so I don't have to drink them all straight away I'm now down to the last two so some of it was straw like mixed I like I like um I like orange but I prefer like more mango or mixed fruit. You like uh what do they call it when you put mixed maybe apples uh, oranges uh ci- citrus but not if you know what I mean it's like it's not too citrusy. And maybe some grapefruit, but I mean grapefruit is it's nice, but ooh, it's it's a bit, ugh, you know. Uh, no, I can't really drink that stuff. Uh, to me, it's like drinking a shot. It's just like that, oh, but without the alcohol effect. Not that I really drink. I haven't had alcohol for absolutely ages. I can't remember the last time. I think the last time I bought four cans of lager would have been at the garage, I reckon. Because I don't like to carry things far. It's one of those rules I've got. It's on my list. It's um, it's not in the top ten, to be fair. But it's just on there, you know. Try not to carry things far. Is don't do thing. Don't you know? Don't do things that cause pain for yourself, if at all possible. What other rules I've got? I try and live by. Oh yeah, this is a new one. Never get another ferret. <laughs> That's my rule. He's on, he's on mine. He's, he's, 
he's not even speaking now. He's on my lap now as we speak, sniffing me balls again, which is weird behaviour. And he's all wet, so he's been, he's basically on heat. Unless he's been drinking, you've been drinking. No, you're wet. It's not f- not from his beard because he's otherwise he'd have water all over his mouth. You're my little baby, aren't you? Yes, you are. I love you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm kissing him, by the way. I'm not just blowing kisses at you in case you get upset over kisses whoever's listening to this it's not time blowing kisses to my boy Andre Andre Dooley Newland yes and he's got a runny nose as well so I don't know what that's about he was sneezing at the weekend but he stopped, he stopped now but I have to be careful because constantly he's kissing me and stuff but we can catch stuff from each other, like cold. So if I if I had a cold, I could give it to him, and if he had a cold, he could give it to me. So I have to make sure that I kind of still give kisses, but just make sure that you keep my distance a little bit. If if one of us is sneezing. Oh, I'm just scratching his neck. Well, he's just laying here, so he seems to be happy. Um, oh yeah, don't get another ferret. That's, that was my. Li- Isn't it weird? I said that, and he just jumped on me. But daddy, no, but it's, I still love you, mate. I just don't want another one of you. Hear that? He sneezed. Then I've tried to explain that to people I've lived with. I've never not lived with as in sharing a bed, but people that have like have had a, a room in a house and I've rented a room in that house as well. And I've lived in about forty odd of those different places since I left school. And I I said to one place, I said that I like you. I just wouldn't want to live with you. And she said, but you are living with me. I said, oh, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, I, I don't, you know, I just don't want to live. I could live with someone that I loved. But I couldn't go back to, I would never want to go back to living in a house where other people lived. I start uh, that would just be for me that's that's just not really my thing so I realise if, if I'm lucky enough to get old and be an old age pensioner and be in me 90s I might end up living in a you know old people's home residential home whatever you want to call it being looked after by robots wow can you imagine that apparently that already now some places have got robots that are looking after elderly people and keeping them company yeah I prefer to have a ferret, have another little, but I want Andre, I want to grow old with Andre, I want him to be with me for the next 30 or 40 years, but I know realistically it's possibly not going to happen, I want you to be around forever, I do, because I love you so much. Even though I do moan, don't I? Mm. Go on, go and play. Go and make some noise. Yeah. 
It's going to be scratching at the front door now, probably. Little bugger. So yeah, I what was it? Oh yeah, I bought some lagers. I bought four. This is absolutely ages ago. I think I had one, and they were Stella. Stella Artois is the name of the the lager, and I just ended up giving. What's he doing now? I ended up giving three cans away to my friend. So I didn't even drink the whole of one. I drank about three quarters and that was enough. Didn't like it. It's not even a case of not liking a taste because you know what? I'll be honest. In the past when I've gone a little while without drinking, I've loved the taste. I didn't like the taste when I was younger, but you know, as an adult, let's say you know, a few years back, if I went, maybe I couldn't afford to drink anything for a few days. When I did have that drink, it was like, oh, it's beautiful. Ever so nice, really, just tasty. So yeah, so it's not a case of the taste. It's, it's don't do nothing for me anymore. Oh, why? It's, it's not. I'm not upset about it. I, you know, I'm not. I'm not holding in tears, but it's weird. I used to rely on it for so much. You know, for years and years and years of working, uh, all through between 2000 and 2000 and. 14, 2015, I was drinking alcohol regularly. Less so after 2014. But before that, it was like, you know, when I was working, it was pretty much like every night. Just to kind of get myself through. Which isn't, not a very good idea, really. But now I don't. It's like, oh, what am I going to do now? I do drink Coke still. But that's coming to a... That's coming to a close. I'm going to wind down the Coke over the next few months. Just gradually decrease. There's no hurry. I'm just going to gradually decrease. And gradually go to the gym gradually I did get a bottle of vodka no I didn't get it my friend got a bottle of vodka and we had I must have had probably maybe a quarter of it Um, I wasn't drunk it doesn't I don't really get drunk unless I drink a lot if that makes sense the only times I ever really really get drunk is at weddings I've never been to a wedding where I didn't get drunk ever I don't think it's just compulsory it's just it's all that free alcohol Um, I like weddings for that I don't like all the the bit I like is the food bit you know all the rest I can kind of do without I'd like to skip through that bit you know the whole (sighs) ceremonial stuff I think my idea what would my ideal wedding be I think my ideal wedding would be uh, yeah, I think my ideal wedding would be if I had to do the. I don't know. Wait a minute. 
would I want to do a big wedding celebration? Probably not because I don't have hardly any friends. So I wouldn't, it wouldn't be, I don't want to be at a wedding where everybody there is like from my wife's family. That would be a bit weird. It depends who I got married to. I suppose if it was planned, I'd have some of my family. Who would I have? I'd have my brothers, my sister, dad, parents. Uh, who else? My cousin, maybe my auntie. That's it. So there's maybe six or seven people. Couple of friends in London. Another couple of friends. Three. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so maybe another ten people added on. So, you know, we're looking at maybe fifteen, maybe twenty people max. to come to my wedding and some of those I haven't seen for ages ages but I think it's different so I've got a cousin and I haven't seen her for years and also because I, I unfriended her on Facebook because you know I, I need to just remind everyone Facebook is a website it's not real, uh, just in case you thought it was. It's not, it's just a website. And I unfriended all my family and friends because I keep Facebook specifically to promote the free stuff, you know, the online videos and audio recordings, podcasts and stuff that I do. So I've kept all of my family and friends off of there but in the past I've had them on there and they've added me and I've t took them off and sometimes they get a bit annoyed and it's like it's not real life you know I've, I've, I block friends I block people that I know in real life it's like you know you've got my telephone number you can call me if you want to talk to me I'm not, I'm not conversing with you on Facebook so that's why I kind of it's different if someone's in another country because Facebook's brilliant for that because you can talk to them for free and there was a point to what I was saying I've got no idea what it was what was the point JJ the point was oh weddings I think I'd quite like the idea of having a wedding where yeah I know having a wedding I don't know because there's there's a little bit of an old fashioned part of me. See, I'm I'm not so much a new man, but I'm fairly open minded, and I try to get as rid, rid of as many limitations as possible. And it's an ongoing thing. It's uh, but I don't you know these like limited beliefs and things should be this way and things like wait a minute. It's, as I said, it's ongoing. It's, I'm never going to be finished with the process, but it's, it's always work to do. Oh, yeah. But I was just... Because if I got married, it would be to a woman. And... I'd like it to be special for her to be about her 
very much the opposite to going to the movies because if I go to see a film I want to watch a film that I want to watch and if I'm watching television I want to watch what I want to watch and if I'm eating getting a takeout I want to eat what I want to eat so I'm not very flexible in some ways <laughs> and I need to need to grow as a person I will do one day but I think for the wedding I think one day if you're going to spend let's say 10 years together might as well you might as well have one day of happiness what do you think <laughs> I just don't fancy the idea of this big wedding apart from the financial aspect of it which we yeah not thinking about that I just don't the idea of having loads of people it's like why why would I want loads of people there A little table in a restaurant, maybe. Or maybe book out a restaurant. But a little restaurant. Like a little coffee shop. And then... Get married. and have dinner like straight away no speeches no waiting around so it'd be dinner at one o'clock go in do you want to marry her? yeah do you want to marry him? yeah you're married Right, let's see. And that, that's it. That stuff, and it's quite a nice way to do it. Or, because I like boxing, I think what would be quite cool is if I was famous, like, you know, I think what I would do is. maybe at the end of a a world title fight organise it so that I'm watching the fight with her we were at the ringside and then I go into the ring I go inside the ring and give her a ring to ask her to marry me or have the marriage ceremony there and get George Foreman who's also a priest to do it and he could he could marry me me and what's her name whoever it is yeah I could get married I could have, get married by George Foreman maybe doing it in Atlanta or at Caesar's Palace see that excites me that would be so cool and my best man I could have who could I have as my best man okay who's my first yeah I could have Tyson Fury as my best man or Anthony Joshua I could have them as my grinds grinds brooms brines um Groomsman, groomsman, yeah. I've have Anthony Joshua. Yeah, I have Anthony Joshua. Wilder and uh, Tyson Fury and also have Lennox Lewis there as well. 
and Frank Bruno. Just basically just introduce all the boxes. Just uh, invite all the boxes that I like. That'd be so cool. It might not be the ideal wedding for her, but it's really it's about me though, isn't it? Isn't it more more important that I'm happy? <laughs> After all, it is, it is my podcast. I um. On oh, those back, we just been in the, in the bedroom making love. He keeps going looking at the radiators for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, he's gone off again. He's acting very strange. So. I I quite like you know the people's going about at the moment we've got this thing in England called Brexit it's like a big political thing and I know that other countries it's just standard isn't it we get focused on our own political stuff and perhaps forget that the rest of the world ain't that interested. They're interested in their own country. You know, they're interested in their own prime minister or president. You know, there isn't just one president of the world. There's lots of different presidents and prime ministers and kings and queens and stuff. And in England, we got this big thing. Well, Britain, we've got this big thing uh, with Brexit leaving the European Union. Anyway, I want to go into that because that's a very unpleasant <laughs> topic, really. But it's. Trying to f- how can I supposed to focus on all this interesting stuff I'm saying? Well, God, he's lit off a pong as well. Seriously, oh, he's just had it. It's like he's he's had a drink of water. He's aimed his bum at me, lit off a massive fart, and then ran off into his bag so he doesn't have to smell it, and it's left me in the room with it. That's just rude. Oh yeah, so with this Brexit thing, there's been a lot of like people's um, personal prejudices have come out a little bit over the years. And... uh, I've got a thing for Eastern European girls or ladies. I do. I have. When I went to Bulgaria, I was just astonished. Um, and when I was in London, I worked with a lot of a lot of girls from. Well, I should say women. A lot of women from uh, various different places. Russia. What's that other place? Not Bulgaria. Um, What's a place that Germany... Germany moved into? Um, Poland, yeah, Polish... Uh, I worked with a lot of Polish people, like men and women, and also Russian, Croatian, Yugoslavian, uh, Hungarian, 
and other like people from various different like parts of Europe and I like them there's a uh, oh, oh, there's this when I was at this club okay I was there was a new waitress there's always new staff coming and going you know people at college university people here on holiday you know whatever lots of staff coming and going and uh, waitresses and waiters and bar staff kitchen staff well I got talking to this uh Russian girl, Russian woman, and she's and I, oh, she was lovely, and I got talking to her, and I was, I suppose I was trying to chat her up, but I was just not, not cheesy, just sort of saying hello to her, and you know what's your, you know where are you from, and you know that kind of stuff, and there was laughter coming from the kitchen, because there was this cubby hole you could see, like a service hatch. You could see the staff in the kitchen were laughing, including the chef and like, why are you laughing? And I noticed there was one person in the kitchen that wasn't laughing, big tall man. Well, it turned out that that was her husband. And they were basically here on holiday. They just decided to come to England from Russia for six months and took on some menial jobs and they were both professionals. I'm not sure what she did, but he was a, a psychiatrist in Russia. So he was the very, you know, he's a medical doctor and he was doing washing up just to keep, you know, to give him enough money to keep going while he sort of travelled around and got to meet, got to see the country and maybe the rest of Europe. And uh, it was embarrassing, but we ended up being friends. Like I ended up being good friends with her and good friends with him. And... I still fancied her, which is weird, you know, just that that doesn't stop, does it? You can't it's just it's just natural attraction, but I got on really well with him, probably better with him than with her, friends wise, which is weird because I'd be at the end of the evening, he'd come and spend time with me and would he'd have a drink and stuff and we'd be talking while the music was on. And he felt so comfortable, he'd start talking in Russian. He'd forget I was Eng he'd forget that I was English. And it's like I took that as a compliment that he f that he felt comfortable enough with me that he must have liked me. And he did. They wanted me to go and visit. When, when they moved away, and I had they left my address. They left his address. And I think they sent a letter to me from Russia. They wanted me to go and visit. Um, but I never did. I kind of wish I did now. It would have been cool. Because they were lovely. A really lovely couple. She got pregnant while she was here. Um, and then she, they went back to Russia to have the baby there. They didn't have the baby here. So they didn't. They had no intention of staying here. They just wanted to to visit. They wanted to go back to their homeland, to their homeland. They wanted to go back to where you know, because he was a psychiatrist. He would have had a, a good lifestyle. It's quite, uh, from what I understand. And I got no idea what she did. I mean, she was She was quite young. I think he was probably in his 30s, but she was in her, her 20s. And I was probably... 
was probably older than her. So I was, I was probably about 28, 29. She would have been probably 24, I'd say. I still remember her, so I can remember, I can visualize her now. She's, um, she's very short, well, shorter than me, which means anyone that's shorter than me is short, because I'm quite short. And yeah, she was lovely. I can't remember her name. But she she had a friend that worked there as well. Or was it she might have been Polish, I don't know. There was quite a few different nationalities. I didn't really take much notice of it. Uh, although I did learn a bit of Polish because I was friends with the the men that worked in the kitchen. So they started trying to teach me different like words and stuff, you know, put swear words to start with. But it was a lot of, um, I forget now, is it da, is yes, and what that thing is, when I went to Bulgaria, I didn't know, you might not know this as well, yes means no, and no means yes in Bulgaria. Uh, which is quite a confusing way to be, isn't it? So if someone nods their head the way we the way we do, you might be in Bulgaria now. So clearly, you, you're going to wave your head whatever way you wave your head. Andre's just running around frantically. Why? He's basically rubbing himself against everything. So, so I've got these dumbbells, right? And they're on the floor. They're getting heavier every week because he's rubbing themselves against it and, and, ru and leaving whatever he's leaving on them. I'm scared they're going to get pregnant. Seriously. These little half ferret, half dumbbells running around. When I was in Bul when when I was in Bulgaria, oh dear, I got off the plane. I got off, yeah, got off the plane, got onto a coach. It was at night. Got to the hotel. Bulgaria is a beautiful country. Massive thing. I'd probably say that every country has beauty. But you know, Europe. Every European country is beautiful. You know, I'm sure there's parts that aren't. Obviously, the parts that have been wrecked by conflict and stuff. So Bulgaria, I didn't get to see it properly coming in because it was dark. But when I left, when we left the hotel, you know, for good, and went made our way back to the airport, we got to see the surrounding areas and the blocks of flats where people lived and it looked a lot different. Because, you know, because at the time where we were on the mountain where the hotel was, because it was a snow resort. I'd like to go back there. I would just... I don't know. You know, sometimes it would be nice to revisit something. Go back to the exact hotel. And just chill out there. I would not go onto the slopes. Go nowhere near the snow. I'd just hang out in the hotel... Go for walks and just maybe, you know, get make friends with some of the people that are working there and just say, could you just show me around the real life, you know, the real places where people live and stuff. 
and I hope he doesn't disturb the neighbour downstairs him running around all the time because that's quite noisy isn't it I reckon it's because I'm awake late anyway every night but imagine well it's quarter past one and the person downstairs trying to sleep and all she's got is oh he's in the bag now I think he's like I think he must have been a security guard in his last life and he used to go He's used to going on patrol. You know, has to go to different checkpoints. Just check the area. So that's what he does. He runs around, goes near the radiator, goes into the kitchen, goes into the bathroom, goes to the front door, goes into the bedroom, checks everything, and then goes back into the bag. It's like, Andre, you're not getting paid for this. Not even minimum wage. So in Bulgaria, I get to the hotel the very first night, and I was just relieved to get there. You know, been a long day travelling, and it was just nice to get there. And and there was this lady on the reception. And she was really nice, and I was chatting her up. I suppose it's, don't forget, it's a long time ago. You know, it's about two thousand and three. So I was only only a young a youngster back then. I was allowed to talk to ladies then, and I got talking to her and saying, "Oh, so you know, what's your name and my name, and you know." She said, don't you know your own name? I said, yeah, I do, but I'm just trying to tell a story. She said, oh, okay. Just making a bit of shortcuts. Okay. And she said something about going on holiday. I said, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm doing. I didn't realise she meant she was going on holiday. And I didn't see her for the rest of the week. I was there for seven days, I think. The very last day, going out to the get on the coach and she follows me out to say goodbye and I can't remember if she kissed me or gave me a hug or something it was just like oh great someone she liked me we clearly got on well but it was too late because now I'm about to leave the country and she said to me I spoke to you last night but you didn't you didn't want to talk to me I said oh okay I said were you wearing a makeup you wearing a sign <laughs> no I didn't say anything about makeup uh, no I, I said oh I can't remember what I said I was drunk all the time when I was there pretty much and she so that was kind of a missed opportunity but I kind of got on really well with three of the waitresses three three other three other ladies uh, four actually because it was like one at each bar and one was a waitress one was the yeah one was a waitress I forget her name she's the first person I met and we chatted and we did we arranged to go out on a date the second one was she ran the pizza place and I chatted her up and we arranged to go on a date the third one she was in the pool bar so basically there was a bar above the pool 
she had a boyfriend, so there was nothing going on there, but I just really liked her, so I spent time with her. Um, but the when I did go to leave, I went to say goodbye to her, and she pulled me into a little room, gave me a big hug. So I just... And her telephone number. So, yeah. Um, but the... So I made a mistake. It was communication. That's what it was. Or miscommunication. There was the waitress. I forget her name, so I'm just going to call her the waitress. The waitress. She... We arranged to go out in the evening. I went to the bar that she was supposed to be. She was there, but she was with someone else. Another man. So I just... She saw me, and she carried on talking to him. So I thought, oh, okay, I better leave this. And then <laughs> the lady in the pizza place, I arranged to meet her. I met up with her and I, no, I saw her in the bar and I said, would you like a drink? And she nodded her head, no, which means yes. But I didn't realize it meant yes, I thought it meant no. And, or I forgot. So I said, oh, okay then, bye. And then, the next day, I was speaking to the other wait, the, the waitress, and apparently what happened between them is they both said they'd met a nice English man who asked them out, who, uh, and... They both said, oh, and it turned out it was me. I'd asked both of them out. And I think they were even living in the same room, in the same hotel room. In an ideal situation, it might have worked out, but... <sighs> yeah. And then right at the end, there was the, the lady from the reception. Who else was there? I know someone else from another bar, but I never, I used to sort of say hello, but that was it. I didn't want to be greedy. <laughs> but what it is, is a communication. I didn't communicate the way I was trying to I wasn't trying to ask everyone out I was just trying to get to know them you know sort of and, and I didn't know if they liked me or not it turned out that three of them did four of them did and they all lived in Bulgaria and I live here and I came back and I tried to contact the the lady that left me a telephone number, but very difficult. Just couldn't get through. Had to buy one of those special telephone cards, you know, and didn't didn't work. It would have been so much easier now with the internet. I know we had the internet in two thousand and three, but. Or well, no, it's two thousand and two, but not like this now. It's just like I oh, watch your Facebook page, and you can just call anyone anywhere in the world. It's easy, so easy. So I've got, and I dated a. Not Bulgarian, um, Romanian lady. That was my last girlfriend. Pretty much was Romanian, and I think, I think what it is. Although there was, 
I think the disadvantage is also an advantage for me. So there's a disadvantage of miscommunication, which can be harmful, of course. But the longer it takes for them to understand me, the longer it takes for them to realise what I'm like. So they they might be with me thinking I'm nice for a few months, uh, a little bit longer, before they listen. They think, wait a minute, what's this bloke talking about? What? I'm like, no, I don't want to know that. I don't want to know that. Oh, no. Why does he keep talking about those Bulgarian girls in that hotel? I wonder if he's making it up. I wonder if he's ever really had a girlfriend. I don't think he has. Look at him. <laughs> I think he's a virgin. Oh, yeah, I'm not a virgin. You're a virgin. There's nothing wrong with being a virgin, actually. I'll be honest. When I lost my virginity, I didn't feel any different. I just felt very tired. And... Disappointed. And I felt sorry for the the lady that I had to put up with me. I wanted to apologise and say to her, look, you will recover. <laughs> I just didn't know what I was doing. I'm sorry. Because... Okay, I won't go into details, but just... It's not always a bad thing though, not knowing what you're doing because sometimes you go places that you don't realise you. It's a bit like driving in a new area and you don't know the area and you turn a corner and you end up, you know, seeing things that you didn't know existed and you wouldn't have seen them before. So, you know, sometimes the good thing about not knowing what you're doing. Yeah, on that note, I'm a gonna go. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope that that was boring enough to drift you into a drifty, sleepy, drift, drift, sleep. Yeah, yeah. Da, da. We learned a bit of Romanian. Because I've met a Romanian person that I like. I'm actually trying to help her out a bit, actually. But, uh... I've got this uh, Romanian app on my phone. So, yes is da, no is new. Erivadurci is goodbye. River Adurci. River Adurci with something like that. And there's some other words. That's not the entire language. There are other words to learn. It's a start, isn't it? It's a start. I reckon love can help you to learn a new language. But to be fair, I never loved anyone enough to want to learn English. <laughs> There's a joke there somewhere. Okay, I'm going to go. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.